Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is me, Waves from Slidenerd here. In this video, we are going to talk about the real stuff behind methods. So far, we guys discussed methods at a high level, which means we talked about what a method looks like, what are the different types of methods out there, and how we work with methods. But here, we are going to talk about the technical terms behind methods, like the formal parameter list, method header kind of stuff, and then we are going to take a short look at the method call stack, which means what happens when a method gets called. So first, let's talk about the structure of a method. What you have first is the method header, which is this complete statement, including your method name, the parameter list, the return type, and the modifiers, if any. Then what you have is the opening braces. Then whatever code you write inside becomes the method body. After that, you have a return statement. Now remember, it is not necessary that you have a return statement in every method that you make. You can have methods with return void over here. And in that case, you will be writing nothing over here or simply a return with just semicolon. Now we'll be talking about the second one in a while. Next, this is the closing brace that finishes off your method. Then if you take a look at public and static, the such keywords are called modifiers in Java. Now if you guys are not sure about what they do, don't worry. We will be discussing about modifiers in a lot more detail in the upcoming videos. But for now, let's just stick with those words and try to kind of get them in our way. So next, let's talk about the return value. This determines the type of value that you're returning over here. Now, for example, if answer is a boolean, then you'll be writing boolean over here. But in our case, the answer is a variable of type integer. So our return value is integer. Then of course, you have your method name and you have your parameter list. As you guys remember, for every parameter that you specify over here, well, you have to specify the data type of the parameter. Now, just to give you guys a rough insight of whatever things are, the method header has the modifiers, return type, method name, parameters. This modifier is optional and it tells the compiler how to call the method. Now, like I said, we'll be talking about that in a lot more detail. Now, these parameter values that we have here are called formal parameters or simply parameters. The return value type is the data type of the value the method returns. Like I said, what is the data type of this value or variable over here? And that is what you're specifying over here at the top. And then if you don't return a value, then the return type is void over here. Very simple, right? So let's talk about further things that are associated with our method header. Like the variables, the formal parameters. Now remember, when you call a method you pass the value to the parameter which means if you want to call this method max then there's probably three comma five something like that which you'll be calling over here now if you guys have not seen my previous video about methods where i've talked about method calling in detail please go back and check that video out because there i have explained everything about the three different types of methods and the syntax behind how methods work ultimately the parameter list is nothing but the type, the order, and the number of parameters. Now let's discuss each of these little values. Type. Well, here we have an integer number one. We have an integer number two. So the type does matter. The number of parameters, maybe if there was number three, then that would be different from this method that we have over here. And the order in which they are called. Now here, in our case, as of now, it doesn't matter if number two is first, number one is second. But if you have a boolean over here, then it will really matter where you put the boolean, whether the boolean is in the first place, where it's in the end of this, or something like that. Now again, if you guys are not clear with what is going on, don't worry about it. We will talk about this order very much in method overloading in the further videos. And then of course, the method name and the header together make the signature of the method. This complete statement that you have is called the method signature. Parameters are optional. Now let's talk about something called the method call stack, which means what happens exactly in your compiler when you start calling methods. So first we have a main method over here, which has two variables in i is five, j is six. And I'm calculating some result over here, which is something called max of i j. So what is this max? I'll take a close look. Here is our int max. And as you guys notice, there's int a, int b, which means your i goes inside int a, and your j goes inside int b. Here I'm simply trying to find the maximum of two numbers, which is a very simple case if you say if a greater than b then max is a, else max is b, 
and I'm simply trying to return that value max over here so when I say return obviously this value is gonna come all the way over here and it's gonna go from the right to the left inside result so what happens in the compiler first what you have is a stack inside this stack whatever method gets called is always on the top so first our compiler calls the main method which means it is on the top you have the value size 5 j6 result is null then from main method you call max method which means this time max method comes to the top over here so as you guys notice main is over here the value i equals to 5 gets into a equals 5 the value j is 6 is copied into b equals 6 kind of stuff right and now what happens next is max finish executing it returns the result and we are left again with our main but this time notice the value of result equals 6 which is the greater of 5 and 6 has gone here from max inside main back here and this time that means our stack is having main at the top and ultimately our program finishes running and at that point our stack is completely empty so this is known as a method call stack in other words whatever method you call is currently at the top and all the other methods below get in the order in which they are called like for example there was main at the bottom then there was max which was at the top now if you called some other method below max then that would come to the top and so on so now let's try and see how this call stack looks like in java code with the help of a simple example so in the next video we are going to talk about this method call stack and i'm probably going to show you guys a simple illustration of how the different methods get called in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please subscribe to our channel let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below and please support us in any way you can thank you very much i'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day